Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And you know, I wasn't born yesterday. Every March or late February, at the very first sign of a sore throat or watery eyes and itchy skin, I know what is upon me. Snow mold season. I recognize the symptoms immediately and I know what the source of the problem is. Snow mold is a uh, mold that feeds on the dead grass and leaves that lie underneath the insulating protection of thick snow cover. Once the snow begins to melt and the wind carries the mold spores into the air, I know I am in for a rough month, but I know what to do. I received prior instructions from my doctor and pharmacist until the first rains wash away all the remaining traces of mold on city lawns, the spring thaw is still a difficult time, but it's not an impossible time. It wasn't always the case. When I first moved to north central Alberta, I seemed to come down with a sinus cold or infection that would last for weeks every March. As I had not yet found a family doctor, I frequented several local medicenters over the years. Each clinic would prescribe antibiotics and sinus meds then send me on my way home. I finally found a doctor through a friend's recommendation and during my first visit I knew I had found a treasure. The next spring I found myself in her office with my usual complaints. She took a throat and nasal swab and ordered the necessary blood work to check for infection, something my previous doctors hadn't done. When the test for infection came back as negative, she suggested I probably had an allergy to snow mold. I was from Southern Alberta and I had never heard of snow mold. The warm Chinook winds of Southern Alberta melted the snowpack several times every winter. And now that I lived in North Central Alberta, I lived where the snowfalls of late autumn covered the ground until spring thaw. Snow mold, I wondered, sounds like a snipe hunt to me. If you don't know what a snipe hunt is, it's a prank that campers do or uh, farm kids do to city kids where they tell the kids to go out in the middle of the night with a flashlight and uh, pillowcase and look for snipes by calling them? Well, there are things called snipes, but there is no such thing as a snipe hunt. I knew I could trust my doctor's word even though I had never heard of snow mold. She had never steered me wrong before and I needed to trust her. I chose to accept her diagnosis. The medication she suggested was just an over-the-counter thing and the results were outstanding. Once again, I was free to enjoy the delightful spring air after a long winter of hibernation. There are times where I feel off kilter spiritually, but I just don't know what the underlying problem is. And so I place my trust and confidence in the wisdom and experience of my great physician. As long as I choose to accept his diagnosis, and follow his advice, I'll walk in health and wholeness. However, I must lay my skepticism at the door. Psalm 1, verse 1 and 3. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither. In all he does he prospers. As Spock used to say, live long and prosper. But the only way that's going to happen is if you, as 
we've said before, set aside your preconceived ideas, your skepticism, and your unbelief, and take God at his word. He's not going to steer you wrong.